This is the Leisker MD5. Mountain, down tube, and then five, sort of designating the battery that they've got going on. It's a pretty cool electric bike. It's sort of a hard tail. It's meant for mountain, or maybe more trail. Uh, and it's, it's fairly affordable at around 2,500 bucks. Uh, Leisker is a German brand that's uh, making its way to America, and I'm getting a kind of a first look at this, a uh, chance to ride it around the block and, and test it out. Um, unfortunately, not a whole lot of mountain terrain here, but <laughs> I have gone on the grass, and you know, it's, it's worked pretty well. I, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into the specs and give you an overview of the drivetrain and everything. So I was weighing this earlier, it's about 52 pounds. Battery is about six and a half pounds, so you could easily take that off if you wanted to lighten things up a little bit. Quick release on the front wheel, so same thing there. Traditional triangle sort of diamond frame on this, so it's easy to, to hang off the back of your car if you needed to do that. And I noticed that they've got um, a hole here on the fork, as well as back here at the top of the seat stays, and then some threaded bosses. Uh, and, and there's actually two of them right here for this derailleur guard. So if you wanted to take this guard off, you could probably put a disc brake compatible rack on this and turn it into a nice, you know, kind of a, a commuter by week and a little a trail bike by weekend. So I, I like that. And hardtails are, are great and in terms of affordability and efficiency and just that zippy feel that you get from a, a hub drive, like this bike, it performs pretty well. It's a lot of fun. It's available in one frame size right now, 19 inches for that down tube. I felt like it was a little bit uh, compact. I wasn't leaning super far forward. There are a couple stacks in here at the Neko headset. And uh, I guess that's fairly angled, but this is 22 inches right here on the reach. So for me, a guy who's like 5'9", I felt like, you know, pretty comfortable. I wasn't, it wasn't like super aggressive riding this thing around, but just keep that in mind depending on your body type. Uh, when, when you get going. So back here we're looking at a Shimano Acera 8-speed in the rear and that's pretty decent. You know, Acera is a couple steps up from the bottom in Shimano's um, derailleur line and then we've also got a 3-speed Acera in the front. So 24 gears total and that definitely makes it capable for off-road riding if you need to do some climbing and it, it goes uh, slightly above 20 miles per hour in powered mode so you know you can keep up the cadence feels pretty natural i like the welgo pedals uh, these are an upgrade in my opinion they're a little bit larger this nice platform they've got these metal nubs so they're fairly grippy uh, definitely a fan of that slap guard quick disconnect for the motor cable and you know the wires are pretty well pretty well routed along the top tube here but also uh, the power it goes right through the down tube and kind of pops out down here I'm kind of used to seeing that on electric bikes, but not all of them do it. That, to me, that makes it a little bit more purpose-built. You know, it's designed to be electric. Right here is the cadence sensor. So that, that senses your, your crank movement as you pedal. And I, I wasn't able to see inside, but it's fairly responsive. I think it's maybe equivalent to like a 12 magnet pedelec. Um, we'll see that when we do a ride later. I love that it has a kickstand because some mountain bikes don't and this one's adjustable length, I think. Uh, but the way it's set up is actually fairly stable. Keeps the bike upright, no problem. Love that. Silly Royale saddle, 30.4 millimeter Promax seat tube. We're talking about the Neko um, headset, Promax stem. It's just sort of a flat bar. So what you'd expect for off-road. And a little bit a little bit wider, you know, it's good stuff. And the Velo locking grips, I like that. Sort of an upgrade. Definitely an upgrade on the the brakes here. So these are hydraulic mineral oil. Tektro Aruga E-Comp with 180 millimeter rotor in the front and 160 in the rear. So good stopping power. Both of those brake levers have motor inhibitors. So if you pull them and you're in pedal assist mode, it'll cut power to the motor. It's not like you'll be fighting the system. And actually, uh, while we're on the electronics and stuff, I want to mention that this actually has a, a sort of an upgraded sine wave controller that's going to make the motor a little bit quieter and just a little bit smoother, maybe more efficient. So a traditional electric bike motor, um, when used with a controller, it might be like on off, on off, on off with the magnets. Whereas a sine wave controller 
it's a little bit smoother. It's more like a dimmer switch where it's like oh no 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 like that. Um, I don't know. Maybe that sounds crazy to you guys, but uh, that's what it's supposed to do. And worth mentioning here, Schwabi Smart Sam tires here. We got 27.5 by 2.25. This is a good size because it's slightly larger than 26. It gives you better rolling momentum, and you're just going to be able to just break and set. Um, kind of sandwiching it together right there. Battery pack here uses lithium ion Samsung cells, which are nice. The whole bike comes with like a year long comprehensive warranty, which is cool. It's got uh, kind of a locking mechanism here. I might actually just take this off and show you. So here we go. Just twist it like that. And the whole thing slides up. There we go. You can see that it's just mounted to these two bottle cage bosses, and that's sturdy enough and uh, sort of straight enough to keep that battery weight low and, and out of your way, but of course it does take up the space where a bottle cage might otherwise mount. So keep that in mind, you can get a saddle mount or maybe a camelback or something. Here's the battery pack, you know, kind of what you'd expect. It's got like a little LED charge level indicator, four lights, they're all green right now. Here's the charging port and a USB charging port for your portable electronics, which I love. This one's easy to access. I've seen a couple bikes that you know, the USB port is kind of hidden, maybe it's down here. This one's real easy and very close to you know, your cockpit where you're probably gonna have that device. So I like that, but still keep in mind if you're pedaling and there's a USB knob sticking out, you could hit it on your knee and break it off. This is probably more useful just as like a backup power supply in your house or if you're on the go and your phone starts to lose charge you need a quick top off so I like that I also like that it's frame matched except for this black bar you know it's it's not bad um, definitely looks looks sharp uh, on the frame like that and um, seems to work pretty well it's fairly straight and this is a 36 volt 13 amp hour so that's nearly half a kilowatt uh, and depending on how you ride the bike you should easily be getting 20 miles per charge is great and again excellent if you're using it for like a commuter around town um, you need to make it to the office you can take the charger along it's like less than a pound and a half this charger and it's pretty small uh, fit in your backpack really easily that kind of thing okay so to get the bike going come down here and press the power button once on the battery pack and then up here at the cockpit press power again and the display comes to life and this does swivel Kind of reduce glare which is important on a sunny day like today um okay so this is a little bit more advanced like i want to start off by saying you can backlight the display by pressing the power button once more you see the little light icon comes on uh, but in general you've just got your speed right in the middle miles per hour is what it's set for right now pedal assist there are six levels and your battery charge state um, trip meters, they actually have two trip meters, there's odometer, time, and then up here on the left, this is what's really interesting, there's eco, normal, and power. And so depending on which one of those you choose, the current's going to kind of be increased on this bike and, you know, you're going to feel like there's more power, but of course you're going to wear the battery down more quickly. So I guess it's, it's best to kind of balance that with your pedal assist level. Pedal assist 6 is going to give you the most, like, the highest top speed, I should say, whereas power level over here is going to give you the most power. So you kind of mix and match those. Um, and if you want to adjust any of this stuff, you got to hold set here, and then it opens up kind of the menus where you can choose wheel size, and, you know, power mode, that kind of stuff. Otherwise, it's just traditional plus and minus over here to go through your pedal assist levels. Kind of starting out at zero. Go ahead and stow the kickstand and just take it away here. I'm kind of jealous. It sounds like some kids are swimming over there. It's a hot one. It's a good day for it. I just love the fact that they've created this custom trigger throttle over here. Okay? It's so slim. It fits right in there with the brake levers and sort of those trigger throttles, uh, trigger shifters, and it just stays out of the way. You know, like you look at this cockpit, it's pretty clean and everything's easy to reach. It, right now it's mounted a little bit high, so it's like I have to swivel my hand up to kind of reach it, I, I might kind of tip it forward, but I think there's room to do that. And, you know, in general, it's just, it's real smooth and, and nice. Okay, so 
since we're in pedal assist level zero, which is technically throttle mode, we're going really, really slow. And this is one of my complaints with the bike. It'd be nice if it took you up to full power, you know? I mean, there is, there is a range on this throttle, right? I could just barely touch it if I didn't want to go full power, but they aren't really taking advantage of that. If you want to go faster with the throttle, you basically have to turn on pedal assist and go up to a higher level. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Arrow up here. And as I do, I can feel the bike really kicking now. You know, it does a good job. It's really zippy, and I am in power mode right now, so it's kind of the most powerful. Here's the throttle mode. Just pretty smoothly. Again, nice to have 24 speeds. There's a bit of a delay in the pedal assist, so I'm gonna try to demonstrate that. See how it stays on a little bit longer even after I've stopped pedaling, so you kind of keep that in mind. That's where those brake lever motor inhibitors come in handy, because you might really want to kill the power immediately if you're in a precarious like mountain biking trail. Thank <laughs> you.